Right, so George Galloway has won the Rochdale by-election, but he didn't just win it, it was a landslide. Yet the media are going to great lengths to excuse this win as somehow exceptional. Several mouthpieces referring to it as a win in special circumstances, and although certainly there's been a lot of controversy leading up to this by-election, and even on the night of it, actually none of that mattered. Because Galloway first and foremost stood on a platform on a subject that he's been consistent on for decades, Israel and Palestine. And no matter what you think of the man himself, how you might criticise him, whether you like him or you do not like him, what he's done in the past that has certainly courted controversy, and goodness knows the media are deploying that again now, but what he has shown here, and what the result has actually shown, is that a continuation by the two mainstream parties to back Israel, in light of them committing some of the worst atrocities in living memory, is a vote killer. And a small party, or even an independent, can and will beat them, both when they stand for what is right and what is just. Right, so election night last night got off to a bit of a bumpy start. It's all hell broke loose, frankly. The returning officer was called in early at one depot. The police were also called to the Deeplish Community Centre, where George Galloway's team had caught Labour red-handed, engaging in corruption for a candidate that their party had allegedly, formally, already disowned, aided and abetted by a clerk who got sacked on the spot. It turned out that Galloway's campaign manager had discovered that Labour canvassers were being allowed to speak to voters outside and that voting without ID was being permitted. How much this benefited Labour's former candidate in that particular location, we don't know. The candidate Starmer blew off because he knew he was going to lose the seat and needed to save face. The candidate, Azar Ali, had dared voice a contrasting opinion on the events of October 7th of that of Starmer's Labour, the established line. He shared Egypt's view of said events instead of Starmer's, Egypt claiming to have warned Israel about Hamas plans well in advance of October 7th. Well, justifiably chagrined by the treatment by his party and knowing he would still appear on the ballot for Labour, Ali carried on and painted himself as an anti-Starmer candidate from then onwards, but all in all it amounted to nothing as George Galloway, very much already the anti-Starmer candidate, ended up wiping the floor with his opponents and taking Rochdale for his Workers' Party of Britain. Turnout in Rochdale, considering this was a by-election, was not bad. 39.7% was the turnout, roughly two-thirds of typical general election turnout, and of that, Galloway took 39.7% of the vote, giving him a not indecent majority of 5,697. Obviously, he only holds the seat for a matter of months before things go to a general election, date still to be determined, but having stood on a platform not just on Gaza, but also on local hospital, local medical care, particularly maternity care as well, he has a bit of a time to prove his worth to his new constituents. Aside from Galloway winning, though, the remaining results were no less interesting for a number of reasons. For anyone thinking Galloway's win is just him proving a point on Gaza, this being a single issue by-election in a constituency with a large Muslim voter base, as a lot of people have looked at it as. The second place candidate was also an independent, a local mechanic called Dave Tully, who has come in from nowhere. He only started his campaign something like four weeks ago. He's had no press attention whatsoever. And as Galloway took nearly 40% of the vote, Tully actually took 21% of it himself. He did extraordinarily well. And so between them both, took close to two-thirds of the available vote, two-thirds of turnout. The Tories came third, barely getting little more than half of what Tully did, let alone Galloway. Labour was still on the ballot, as our Ali kept campaigning, but they lost a catastrophic 43.9% of their vote. And they'll excuse it by saying, oh, well, we ditched our candidate. But functionally, most people, when they go to vote, don't know about the candidate, don't much care about the candidate, and vote for the party. As much as people are falling over themselves on social media to excuse Labour on this basis, Ali was on the ballot as the Labour candidate. People will have voted accordingly, except so very many didn't. The former Labour MP for Rochdale turned Reform UK candidate, therefore about as welcome as a fart in a lift, Simon Danzer, came sixth. Labour losing such a massive chunk of their vote meant they secured just 7.7%, the lowest vote share from Labour in Rochdale ever. Labour's next lowest result was a third place showing back in 1918 when they stood for the very first time in Rochdale and even then 
got more than double what they did last night. They got 16.9%. Here's a bit of what Galloway said in his acceptance speech that I want to draw attention to. Keir Starmer, this is for Gaza. You have paid and you will pay a high price for the role that you have played in enabling, encouraging and covering for the catastrophe presently going on in occupied Palestine in the Gaza Strip. Now, Rochdale has been a Labour seat since the Blair landslide, and they just lost it extraordinarily heavily. They will make their excuses, but they knew they were losing this seat. They know they've lost vast swathes of their Muslim voter base, and there is little chance of them winning it back, refusing to budge an inch on their pro-Israel stance. They will arguably lose even more, and that is exactly what Galloway was getting at there. Starmer has been warned, but he isn't listening, and he never will. Starmer expects to win the general election by saying, I don't actually care what you think about me or my party. If you want the Tories out, then you will vote for me. He said even that is a lie, but he's no different to the Tories at all, especially on Israel and Gaza. Now we who spend an inordinate amount of time studying the politics of all of this know this already, as do the media. But whereas we embrace Labour and the Tories losing seat after seat as they absolutely deserve to come the next general election, those who benefit from the status quo and the media, many of them who own or control or influence, are also straining to get themselves heard. Chris Williamson, former Labour MP as well, now in Galloway's party, was interviewed during the vote count by the BBC. And this is what went on. The fact is that the, the Labour Party is facilitating a genocide that's taken place before our very eyes. It's absolutely outrageous that the Labour Party of all political parties, which has always had a strong peace contingent within it, is now actually supporting genocide. OK, so if we could maybe just avoid that language, if that's OK for now, because that is well, something even that may well offend well, some people. Well, it may offend, but even the International Court of Justice have acknowledged that there is a plausible genocide going on. When you okay. see the Israelis massacring people who are starving... He's absolutely bang on there, and I think Williamson's tone was very much the one we've all had in response to Labour and Tory attitudes over the last four months of genocide in Gaza. But the BBC were more interested in trying to get Williamson to not say the word genocide. The ICJ has ruled a plausible case for this exists. This is the BBC. We pay for this. Absolute failures. Other media were just as bad. I'm not sharing the video footage of this one. It was just dross. But ITV decided to do a Who is George Galloway segment. In short, they talked all about what he's done previously, what he said previously, from pretending to be a cat on Big Brother to hanging out with Steve Bannon and Nigel Farage. You can thought to the man all you like. Goodness knows there's multiple reasons why you can. But if you make it all about his controversies, then you're actually covering up the reasons he actually won here. You don't have to like Galloway one iota to ultimately recognise why he has won. And absolutely, he now has to demonstrate he can be a decent local MP, or he won't last beyond the next general election. Galloway won because whatever you think of him, his support for Palestine and Gaza is a long one and a consistent one. A record of opposing abhorrent warmongering foreign policy. It is his opposition to the Iraq war that sort of slung out of labour under Tony Blair. Whatever you think of him as a man or as a politician, he's not a weather vane on matters like this. He has Starmer bang to rights, now Starmer will have to face him in Parliament on this, on the fact he didn't back the SNP amendment, or motion even, on the fact he scuppered that vote with Labour's amendment, and is working overtly to oppose a ceasefire that points the finger at the people committing genocide, instead pointing it more at those on the receiving end, blaming Hamas almost five months on from their attack on one night of October 7th, as bad as that is and condemnable as it is, but that is perverse in light of the overwhelmingly disproportionate response that has been going on in Gaza, committed by Israel for the entire time since. People see it. They recognise it. They're seeing through it. They're appalled by it. And they won't back people defending that. And who still are. The Tories announcing plans to curb pro-Palestine protests. And Labour have, of course, now come out in support of that, like they always do. Keir Starmer himself said in 2020 that Let's be brutally honest with ourselves. When you lose an election in a democracy, you deserve to. You don't look at the electorate and ask them, what were you thinking? You look at yourself and ask, what were we doing? For once, I completely agree with you, Keith. Other Labour figures, though, 
have been completely batshit. This is what supposed journalist turned star Malik Spittle Paul Mason said after Galloway's win. Galloway's victory in Rochdale is a which side are you on moment, both for the left and Democrats everywhere. The number one task is to isolate and ostracise him, and any politicians and activists aligning with him treat him like the Greek Parliament treated Golden Dawn. He won the mandate of the people of Rochdale, and you're now demanding Parliament do something about that? Like what? Golden Dawn, you brought them up. So you want him arrested for winning then? The man is absolutely unhinged, but this also shows the arrogance and entitlement from the Red Tories of Team Keith. Rochdale is, according to the 2021 census, the 18th most Muslim constituency in the UK, and I think I'm right looking at the list, that every constituency above Rochdale in that table is also a Labour seat. Looking at what Labour lost by vote percentage, those MPs in those seats should be very, very nervous. What should make them even more nervous than even that influence of the Muslim vote there is that despite that large Muslim population, Rochdale as a constituency is still 75% white. So this argument about it being all about Muslims walking away from Labour actually is a lot broader. Far more than just Muslim people are abandoning Labour and its pro-Israel leanings, and that being the reason for it. Backing Israel has every chance of destroying Labour and Starmer. A smaller party or an independent standing on a platform in the similar way as Galloway did for an immediate ceasefire on the side of Gaza against Israel, backing BDS, backing sanctions, backing arms sales bans. There's a lot of Muslim votes that clearly, as Rochdale implies, would get behind them, but not just Muslim votes. Labour MPs will never be allowed to take such a stance as that. They have a serious Starmer problem if they're hoping to get re-elected. They have a serious Zionism problem, and it's going to cost them if they don't do something about it. On top of that, we have the weaponization of Islamophobia going on by both the Tories and Labour right now, determined to attack those communities, endanger them, and not actually appeal to them. Punishing them for what? Voting against you? Oh, how dare they? Votes that have been taken for granted are not only lost, but being actively spurned here. In a general election where the Tories are going to pieces and Labour should be looking towards taking power quite easily, that is anything but certain now, and it does come down to this. Galloway went on in his acceptance speech by mentioning Ilford, where West Streeting has his seat, where he is being challenged by a local independent woman, a British Palestinian, Leanne Mohammed. He mentioned his old seat of Bethnal Green and Bow, where Rushanara Ali faces a challenge by lawyer Tasneem Mukunji. And actually, if Andrew Feinstein does accept his nomination to stand against Keir Starmer, the Labour leader himself is in an inordinate amount of trouble by the looks of this. And then, of course, there is the Muslim vote mu movement which has sprung up and I've discussed on other videos, which is literally going to be facilitating who to vote for based on this and other related issues for Muslim people. If you want one takeaway from this election that sets aside George Galloway, it is this. If ever there was a time where an independent candidate can make a real run at Parliament and succeed in beating the establishment parties, quite clearly it is now. But it requires organisation locally and quickly because time is running out. So if you've got a really rotten MP you really don't like and you really want to do something about them, well now's the time because you really can do something about that. Independent candidates are springing up everywhere. You can get more details on more of them on this video recommendation here. I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers folks.